you there. Welcome back to Bajan Lifestyles where we give you the best of Barbados all of its hidden treasures. <laughs> I love this accent, lady. You like it? Love it. Love it. I can't hold it the entire way, but that's okay. Okay, guys, we are here in Bridgetown and we're about to do the Lit Chris food tour with the beautiful Chazine. Chazine. Oh, okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, y'all. So I'm a video producer by day and then I'm also a content creator sharing all of my favorite life hacks with y'all and travel content. I'm mm -hmm. here in Barbados. Yep. Love Chaz Sabrina's content, subscriber of her. So I'm excited oh, to be yeah. here for the Licorice Food Tour. Yes. And she has a YouTube channel. So I yes, encourage you guys to go out, follow her. Absolutely. Her website is beautiful. I've learned so much from her. And I'm glad we're now friends. Yes, thank you. Yes. you. You guys can find me on Instagram, hey Chazine, yes. or chazine.com. All the information will be there. Yes. All right, are you ready to go into the store? Let's do it. Yes. All right. and welcome to Lake Crush Food Tours. I'm Janelle. So Lake Crush Food Tours, we are the first ever walking food tour in Barbados. So it means that most of our tour will be focusing on the history of the food, but we still wanna make sure you learn a little something about our capital city, Bridgetown, as well as some information on Barbados. So that's what we're really gonna be covering during the very first part of the tour. All right, before we get into all that though, one question, do you know what Lake Crush means? Someone told me around the island something about, it's like a Bayesian saying about food, like loving food or eating a lot of food. Like Chris, yes. You like a lot of food, you eat everything on your plate and you put more on your plate than you should. Mm. Exactly, and some, some people might even go back for thirds and fourths. Yeah. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> so our food culture, a lot of our colonial past, that has to be taken into consideration. But even before we had Europeans here, we would have had indigenous people living here on the island. So according to historians and scholars, they believe the early settlement of Barbados by these indigenous people is dating as far back as 2000 BC. So they're gonna base this on artifacts and carbon dating. So we have three main tribes living here on the island, the Lokonos, the Tainos, and the Kalinagos. And they would have shared several things in common especially from a linguistic and a dietary point of view. So most of the indigenous people originally came from parts of South America as well as other Caribbean islands. And they tend to make that very long voyage here by canoe. Okay. Fruits and vegetables, obviously that plays an important role as well in any person's diet. And this is the part I would say we're gonna now share a lot more in common with the indigenous people. So today in Barbados, a lot of our population consumes a wide variety of root vegetables or as the older generation would say, your ground provisions. Yeah. So for the indigenous people, the main staple source for them was the cassava. Depending on where you are in the world, you're gonna hear different terms for cassava. So other places you're gonna hear yucca, manioc, or Brazilian arrowroot. Eventually, the British settlers also made Barbados very prosperous. And that prosperity is obviously gonna be due to the introduction of sugarcane to the island. So the latter part of the 1630s, we had our first official introduction of sugarcane. By the 1640s now, we had close to 500 sugar plantations on the island. Wow. So we would have had the very first slave ship coming from Africa to a British colony in the early 1640s. And that would have been right here in Barbados. And usually it would have been two main situations whereby many West Africans found themselves enslaved and brought to the colonies. To finish off, I just wanted to go in now a little bit more into the actual foods that would have been eaten by those groups you would have just learned about. So for a time on the plantations, you would have had your indentured servants, your prisoners of war, whether they're going to be from Europe or from Africa. They all shared the same space on those plantations. So they, it meant they would have eaten the same types of food to a certain extent. So for the indentured servants, they were allowed to have two meals per day. And these meals were cooked by the West Africans. Their main staple source was the sweet potato. In addition to that, they were given a dish called loblolly. So the loblolly, which was actually cooked by the enslaved people, the base to that is gonna be Indian corn. You add some water to it, you boil that mixture till it gets to the thickness of a pack. And that dish would have evolved throughout the centuries and eventually become our cuckoo of today. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna get to the good part where you finally get to experience some local food. So on our itinerary for today, we'll be doing two local restaurants. We'll visit a local market 
local bakery. You'll do a street vendor or two along the way. And then to finish off your tour, you know it's not complete unless you get dessert at the end. Of course. <laughs> right now we are in the main shopping area of Bridgetown. So this is the main street where we'll be, we'll be doing your shopping. And the very first food stop is going to be taking us right here to Tim's restaurant. So Tim's is where you'll be doing your home style cooking. So you're not in the mood to cook at home, but you still want to get that home cooked meal. You can always come to a place like Tim's. going to be having here at Tim's is a sample of the macaroni pie so it's one of the more popular dishes so this is our next stop the Palmetto Mall and Market so we're gonna head on the inside We're going to be sampling some local fruit at the stop. So before I mention though the name of the fruit, um, do you recognize this fruit? Ever seen it before? I just tried it yesterday actually. Oh, correct. Yeah. It has two spellings. You can spell it either D-O-N-K or D-U-N-K. Mm -hmm. Outside of Barbados, you're going to hear Indian Jujube or Chinese date. So most of our local fruits will contain a seed on the inside. So there's a seed. So just be careful when you're eating it. I'll let you try it first without the salt, and then afterwards we'll put a little bit of salt on it. I'll take mine with salt. <laughs> Call these ones dragons. Really? Yeah, the right ones? Mm -hmm. I can't tell you what this tastes you like. Though. The real man. It's yeah. good. Yeah, I'm not associated with anything. So, what would you associate with? Don't. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, it's it doesn't taste. There's nothing that tastes like taste. to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this next stop, we're gonna get to try out a very popular local delicacy called fish cakes. Mm. So the base to it is your salted cod, or as you would say in Barbados, salt fish. It would also contain flour and a mixture of local herbs and seasonings. Mm. So we. But I taste that there's fish in here, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> no. Already a winner. I love fish cakes, but I find they're either missing the seasoning or the salt fish. So let's see if he's mastered both. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh, mm -hmm. Drum roll. Got, got the fish. You got the fish, okay. You got the seasoning. Okay. Your two biggest check marks. It's coming in. Oh. It's good. It's good. I like it. All right. Cheers to the cake, boss. Yeah. I mean, but I have um some long. Okay. <laughs> mm. That one, maybe crust. Yeah, I like the first thing. Definitely more meat. <laughs> Not more meat. Mm -hmm.
I love their flying fish. The cuckoo is well flavored. It's a little grainy. Oh yeah. Some people are able to cool get out all this here. <laughs> so we finally made it to the last stop of the day. So welcome to Agape Chalk Lake Factory. And what you're gonna be having here is their ice cream. So the base of their ice cream is gonna be coconut milk. So it's all non-dairy. The only exception to their range is the rum caramel. So that would contain a small amount of dairy.